Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to be here today with you um, to, prevent, to present um, our work at Wellfish uh, in collaboration with KIT. My name is Rahma Adam. I'm a gender and market scientist at Wellfish. I'm also the East and Southern Africa regional focal point for the One CJR Research and Development Initiative. And the study that I'm going to present for you today is looking at the aquaculture sector. It's providing um, the gender value chain analysis for the Northwestern Bangladeshi um, area. And this study was uh, conducted in 2000, um, 2019 to finishing in 2020. First of all, it's important to provide um, some uh, background information. And then I'm going to share with you the research questions that we looked at, then the methodology, then the results, and then the conclusion. First of all, it's important to note that this study is part of the um, larger project that World Fish is carrying out called the IDEA Project. And this IDEA Project stands for Increasing Income, Diversity, Diversifying Diets, and empowering women in Bangladesh and Nigeria. And this is the um, project that is funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, it has two countries, Bangladesh and Nigeria. And for this study, we're just focusing on the Bangladeshi side of the project. And the, the main aim or the objective of this study, in, you know, it was initially to provide a baseline sort of uh, capturing what's going on within the, the value chain? Who are the actors involved? What are the gender dynamics and gender roles and relations uh, within the agriculture sector in North, when the Northwestern Bangladesh? And it's the first study to do so. Uh, and it provided us um, a framework or a means for us to understand the better ways to intervene in the sector, to provide, uh, in order to generate um, you know, to generate gender equitable outcomes within the agriculture sector, as well as empowering women within the value chain. And um, the important aspect to know about Bangladesh is that Bangladesh is a fish eating country and uh, it's ranked fifth in terms of agriculture production in the world. And not only that is the most important thing is also 20, almost 20 million people of uh, Bangladesh rely on fisheries and agriculture for as their means of livelihood. So it's, a, it's really an important sector within the country. And it's projected, the projection shows that, you know, by, you know, coming 2030, um, about um, per capita consumption of fish would have increased from 18 kgs in 2010 to, to 30 kgs by 2030. However, gender inequalities and, and the barriers um, and opportunities for women in this sector are very slim um, in the rural areas of Northwestern Bangladesh. Um, and, and as we, we are seeing that, you know, the, 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 the consumption is projected to, to, to be increasing um, close to more than two folds of, um, you know, or even more for 20, you know, for, from 20, 10 to compare up to 2030 or beyond, then um, there, then there, there it's an, it's, it provides an opportunity for us to really see how women could be able to benefit from this, you know, you know, the sector that will be growing and the demand to meet, in order to meet the, meet the demand of the, of the population. So the research questions, we had um, three main questions, one of them, who is making up this chain? Who, who are the actors within the chain? And how are the actors performing economically, socially um, within the chain? And how are the activities that are within the agricultural value chain sector, how are they governed? Um, who has power? Who makes the decisions within, within this um, value chain? And also it's important to look at the opportunities and the constraints, you know, um, that you know that have a gender, um, gender you know sort of gender 
uh, led by gender, gender dynamics and, and gender relations. How are women and men sort of faring within this sector and what are the better strategies to upgrade um, for the men and women who are in, in, in this sector? So in terms of methodology, the study, the, it's important to know that the, the region, um, the, the focus uh, of this study in Northwest Western Bangladesh is only in two divisions, uh, Rangpu and Rajshahi. Uh, and these, these are divisions that are you know, heavily involved and you know, they have high involvement in the aquaculture sector. And, and we used mixed methods, meaning quantitative and qualitative methods. We also applied, um, it's important to know that we use secondary data from the Department of Fisheries um, in Bangladesh, 2017, 2018. And we also augmented that um, the, a big part of it was for us to also collect um, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the data ourselves, the ground truthing, um, and that's through farm household survey, which was a structured survey, market actor survey, uh, key informant survey, uh, I mean, key informant interviews, um, and then focus group discussions. And uh, also another big element for this study is we were able to use a conceptual framework that is new, um, meaning that it's, 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 uh, it's, it has been developed, you know, specifically uh, for, for, for the aquaculture sector and for the for focus heavily on gender, not only on, the, on just, the, just the value chain, but look, not only looking at the sex disaggregation in terms of how many men and women are involved in each of the nodes, but really um, unpacking all the, um, you know, the, the gender issues um, that are within each node. So looking at the gender division of labor, issues of social norms, looking at the decision making and also looking at who has access and uh, who um, and who is benefiting from the assets that are available within um, the households and the community as a whole in this sector. So the results. Now, the key important element to note is that um, the data from the Department of Fisheries shows that both regions, Rajshahi and Rangpu, are heavily involved in the aquaculture sector, and they are producing. Um, they are producing, you know, for example, Rajshahi is producing close to more than double of what Rangpu is producing in terms of tons of production of fish. But majority of these fish that are being produced, uh, which are indigenous and also, um, you know, exotic species, uh, majority of these fish. Um, are produced within the ponds, as can be seen from the data, you know, um, from the uh, Red Shahi and Rangpu, most of it is within the ponds, followed by seasonal culture, water bodies, shrimp on pond culture, pen culture, and cage culture. So who are the actors? We found that the actors can be divided into, uh, into, into actually six um, segments. We have the seed producers, um, and then the, the seed producers, we have the, the hatcheries, the nurseries, and the seed traders. Once they produce uh, these uh, fish, you know, to you know, produce them into fingerlings and fries, they pass them from the hatcheries, nurseries, and seed traders. They pass this, uh, these fingerlings and fries to the, to the farmers. Now, our analysis focus only on the ponds. Again, this is because majority of the aquaculture sector of the fish is produced for ponds. So we have homestead pond farmers, extensive pond farmers, improved extensive pond farmers, and commercial pond farmers. Um, and for homestead pond farmers, as the name show, the name represent, majority of what they produce, about you know, close to 70% is for home consumption. And this is what the arrows then start showing. Then, then the, a small chunk, in, which is almost 21%, it goes to, you know, it's, it's given to the families and the relatives and the neighbors. And the other, um, you know, the other percentage that is left, uh, which, which is like 5% or a, a bit more, 
is given to the, um, is, is being traded, given to the intermediaries. These are the farriers and the arachidas. For the extensive improved and commercial pond farmers, it's more than 70% of what they produce, they sell to the farriers. And then from the farriers then, the fish is, is, um, is being sold again to the retailers. Uh, they are small ambulatory retailers and medium and large retailers. And then from there, then it goes to the rural consumers, the patches and urban consumers and food service providers uh, who are the hotels and restaurant owners. The key thing to note that is who has the most power is the arachidas, the intermediaries there. These arachidas are the auctioneers of the fish, but they also are traders. They also purchase fish in large quantities uh, from the farmers. And the key thing to note that why they have power is um, they did, you know, they're able to dictate this, the, 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 the price of fish because they actually lend money to these farmers, you know, when they are when when they are at the initial stages of growing the fish, so that they could buy fish feeds and and uh, fertilizer uh, and and the seeds even. So they 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 even this you know they even decide how much fish they're gonna buy from them early on from the beginning, and they can dictate the price of the fish. And the key thing to mention is that from the from the top of the chain to the to to the you know to the bottom where you're going to the retailer, um, most of these activities or the, the 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 who are in charge and who own these hatcheries and nurseries are men, and women uh, within the within these homestead porn farmers they are seen as helpers you know helping their husband to fish to feed the fish, and we are able to only find. Uh, very few, you, you know, countable women who are farriers um, and very little. Uh, we, we were not able to find women who are in the seed trading, you know, seed uh, production business, but other excepts or studies show that they are there, but they're very few. So then we go into this analysis in terms of gender division of labor. The key take home message from these two graphs, the first graph, on the, on the, on the left-hand side, which shows about family labor for fish production, meaning number of people that contribute um, their labor per pond type, that these four pond types I've, that I've noted, uh, is that in, 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 more, in, in most of the cases, more than 50% of the labor is, is given by the, is provided by the youth male and the, and the older male. The same thing goes with the um, with the family labor for fish selling activities. So when you go to the selling activity, now the fish is full fledged and it's ready to be traded. So when you look at the retailers and the intermediaries that I've talked, again, especially for the retailers, you don't see a woman. You hardly see a woman. And for the uh, intermediaries, this is only in the arachidas part where you see um, where you see female where you see uh, female, uh, older female who are larger than 30 being involved. Um, uh, and and um, being involved, you, youth who are female, sorry, who are younger female, less than 30, who are being involved with the, as shown in the, or in the, in the uh, orange section of the bow, 0.92. And these, in, in these younger female actually, most in most times they either um, are used to clean, uh, you know, to clean the area there where the auctioneers are working to sell their fish. Um, but some of them can be absorbed within the family for bookkeeping purposes. In terms of social and gender norms, women are disadvantaged. Again, Bangladesh is a patriarchal, Northwest patriarchal society with Hindu and Muslims. Uh, women are confined to work within their homes to take care of their reproductive roles. Uh, access, you know, access to pawns is limited. Uh, seed transaction information, uh, you know, they are limited to go to sell fish. Uh, they have to stay at home. So it's hindering their full engagement in the agricultural sector. In terms of access to resources and control over resources and benefit, again, we see that women have limited um, over production, over productive capacity in terms of government policy, their government policy also restricts not only women, but also men who do not have the political ties or uh, big affluence within the society to be able to dig ponds, again, limiting 
um, their, their, their ability to participate in the aquaculture. Uh, women also have low financial assets and low market related networks. In terms of decision making, men still have a final say in terms of sales of fish for both homestead and commercial ponds. Uh, women can have very little, you know, some say in terms of, you know, how much, how much of the fish they, it's needed for the consumption of the household, but they cannot even dictate what type of fish can be consumed. Usually larger fish, fish, high revenue, um, and men would like to take those for sale into the market, lefting, leaving home with a, a small size of fish. In conclusion, so what's the take home message? What are the action points that we carried for the, pro for the idea project? And I also want you to carry from this uh, talk. First is so there's a need to address gender norms and attitudes within the household, including you know, the, the way they are framing women as helpers. So within the idea project, we are working to, you know, we have introduced gender transformative approaches um, through theater, forum theater, in order to address these issues. And there's a need to leverage greater access to aquacultural assets such as ponds for women. And what we have done within the idea project is to get some few women who are landless to have access to ponds, to get ponds from land from the government and we dig ponds and we are fishing, we are training them to fish, um, to, to grow fish and sell fish. Um, so loans also is important uh, we are working with NGOs to, 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 to ensure that women who want to have loans, they can have loans. Securing entry points for women within the markets, that's through business training, uh, women who are entrepreneurs or, or who have strong inclination to be one, then they are getting trained. Secure access and control over necessary assets um, and market linkages. Uh, um, so that, that includes you, that includes you know, getting the fish feeds, getting the needed knowledge uh, to bridge the knowledge gap information, um, you getting them involved in ICTs among others and, in, and, and, in, and, you, you, and empowering them to be engaged in decision-making. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do within the IDEA project. Um, though there are some limitation due to COVID, but we hope to be able to achieve, um, to achieve some some transformation that we can share hopefully during the next conference meeting thank you for participating and listening to um this talk today i really appreciate it